Hi, you're here with just Maria D. It is indeed Maria D. And today I'm back with another YouTube collaborators collaboration. What is it? What are we doing today, you ask? Well, April came up with a really great idea of giving the various ladies in the group a different letter of the alphabet. And so we have all had to come up with, with lessons or ways to explore that letter. This time our host is April over at the Simple Rugged Path. Please do check out April's channel. I will link it below as well as the playlist to the other participants in this collaboration. Now we were asked to do it in line with our own learning style or curriculum or however we do it ourselves. So as you know I'm quite autonomous in my approach or I would say very autonomous in my approach. So this is a bit of a tricky one. So I may or may not be able to get Joey to participate in these things with me because he's autonomous. He's allowed to choose what he learns about each day. I'm hoping as he sort of sees me doing so Stuff that he'll come along for the journey as well. Without further ado, my letter is the letter R. I have chosen three activities to do with the letter R. So what you'll see in the next little while is each one of those in individual sessions. So I'm just here today on a quiet Sunday morning before my house is busy in my dressing gown to tell you what the collaboration is about. <music> We are going to do some activities around the letter R. Now, as I said, Joey is autonomous and so he does choose the activities that he engages with on a daily basis. I have not themed our letter. I haven't wanted to just pick a theme yeah. that might not be relevant to what Joe might want to learn mm. about. And so what I have tried to do is pick three activities completely different aren't they? completely different there's no tie-in whatsoever you don't need to put that you just need to pull amazon boxes i think you just wanted to have a knife to use a knife is that the entire point of a knife well it is yeah. that's, just, that's not achieved anything <laughs> whoa lego dude So we thought we, for one of our activities to do with R, we would look at robotics and we would build the Lego boy, a robot for the letter R. We'll get on with it. Okay, so do you have all your bits ready? Um, sure. When Joey said that he would do this for this video, build a robot for the letter R, I thought, ah, fabulous, because this is something that you don't normally do. No, no. 
I'm well, not going to lie, I actually thought that it was going to be a moving robot. Yeah, well, I think one of the reasons <laughs> why I, I, I said I'd do it, because when you said robot, the first thing that came to my mind was, like, programmable and I could make it do stuff. Yeah, so that's right. And I uh, that's the main reason why I said yeah. Yeah, well, to be honest, I thought that that was going to be the case as well. Um, but it's not. It's not like that. You're literally just building a Lego robot, which is fine, and it's a great little kit, and I'd certainly still recommend it, but... I didn't read the packaging correctly. So this is it, and it's for age seven to 12. So you're 11? Sure. So that fits in fine for us. And, well, and, I, and, I, and I think that that was probably right at your level, really, given that you don't do loads of... Yeah. Well, I, th I think what the, the key here really is whether you have done a lot of Lego. So if you are mm. seven and have done a lot of Lego, you will find this really easy. Yeah, yeah. If you are 11 and haven't done a lot of egg Lego, it'll be the right amount of challenge without making you feel frustrated and walking away from the, the task. Yeah. So I think that there was a really good balance for Joe in, the, in where he is in the, the, the Lego world. That would be my take on it. That it isn't about age, it's about aptitude and what each individual child is ready for. I did think we were building a robot in terms of some of the little kits that you buy. That was totally on me. I totally got that wrong. And I, I did actually choose this one thinking that it was a complete package mm. and that we were making something that would move by itself and, and it's not. I will put some links to some videos on YouTube where you can actually make your own working robot from scratch mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe that's something that we can have a look at doing at another time, uh, getting the kit to, to do something like that. Joey's yeah. talking about that he might like to move on to Mindstorms or something at some point to do the more coding side of mm -hmm. robotics as well. This is activity number one for us. R is for robot. Did you know that? What, well, R is for robot? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning and it is morning it is 6 30 in the morning my house has been so noisy lately during the times where i have wanted to record so i am up bright and early to talk to you today i wanted to introduce to you our second activity for the letter r for this one i have chosen a read aloud now when I went looking for a book starting with R, I thought this is a minefield. There are going to be so many books starting with the letter R. Where do I even start with this? So I thought I would hop onto my library catalogue for our local library. And sure enough, there was a summer reading challenge this year there. And they had a book starting with the letter R. This book was called Running on Empty by S.E. Durant. It was part of their recommended reading for their 8 to 11 year old category. Seen elsewhere, it being categorised as 8 to 12. But either way, it fits in the juvenile classification in our library anyway. It was published in March 2018 by Nosy Crow from London. This is the book cover. As I said, we are audio booking it. We are only up to chapter three. It is only a four hour read on Audible, so that's not terribly long. I think that we will knock that over in the next couple of days for sure. It will be something on our priority list. We've got a couple of trips out today and hopefully in that time we will get some more listened to. So what is Running on Empty? The blurb says, might end up looking beyond the camera here as I read it to you. AJ's grandfather has always been the one to keep his unusual family together so when he dies things start to unravel around the edges. AJ is worried about his parents but they don't really seem to notice. In order to deal with his grief and to keep his anxiety at bay AJ does what he and his grandfather did best running round and round the Olympic Park aiming for the cross-country trials running to escape AJ only seems to be heading even closer to disaster running on empty is a beautiful book about false starts and emotional journeys with hope as the ultimate finishing line and some of the reviews say lyrical moving and realistic Essie Durant's running on empty is the struggle of an 11 year old carer who is starting secondary school and wants to run like Usain Bolt. With a rich, diverse cast, it sings, and that was by the Sunday Times. Beautiful writing, 
about family loss, dreams and small pleasures that packs a real emotional punch. And that was by the bookseller. And then the books trust say, AJ situation is described with powerful realism and yet with the very lightest of touches. He is essentially a young carer whose parents have learning difficulties, but there is never a sniff of a stereotype or a call for pity. Durant makes important points about avoiding assumptions with huge subtlety, sensitivity and humour. Convincing, uplifting and immensely readable. That was the review by the Books Trust. Why did I choose this book? Well, one, it began with the letter R. <laughs> we've <laughs> got great reviews but three one of the things that i think is really important to do is to expose our kids to different stories that help them develop empathy and this is an area that we haven't talked a lot about we know a young carer i thought it would be a great book for joey both in tackling his own resilience during hard times but also in developing empathy it when I read the blurb, it was reminiscent of one of my favourite, one of my favourite Australian juvenile authors, Morris Gleitzman. Gleitzman? Gleitzman. Gle I think it's Gleitzman, because <laughs> of the way it's spelled. Who also is an author who is not afraid to tackle real life issues that children have to deal with in, in sensitive, in subtle, in humorous, in child-friendly ways that stretches them beyond their own world and their own understanding and helps them to think outside the square while developing empathy and understanding for the world and the people around them. As you saw, we are up to chapter three and so far I'm enjoying it. I hope to get Joey's point of view soon. He wasn't as taken with the narrator, I think, as I was. But that could be because we've been listening to loads of Stephen Fry uh, reading Harry Potter. And, you know, when you sometimes uh, take on new things like that, you have to get used to them. Activity two for us is the juvenile book Running on Empty by S.E. Durant. <laughs> Originally, when I started planning this collaboration I thought that my three activities wouldn't combine but actually using these acrylic paint markers I'm going to write messages on these rocks so yes our third activity for the letter R is rocks and how does it tie together with the read aloud running on empty well we have an athletics track near where we live and I thought it would be a nice idea to write encouraging messages, encouraging words on these rocks and dot them around the park where the running track is. Who knows, there may be other runners like AJ, the character in the story, that need a message of encouragement. I'm sure that by now you've seen the Kindness Rocks project. I will put a link to it down below. It's where people are leaving rocks with messages on them in parks and in forests and in public places where people can find them and hopefully just hear something lovely that gives them the hope to face whatever they might be facing that day or just to remind them that life is beautiful, that humanity is beautiful and not to give up. Originally I was going to do this craft with Joey. Unfortunately the rocks that I bought went missing. I don't know what I've done with them so I have raced around this afternoon to try and find some replacements. It was not an easy task so I'm throwing this together so the collaboration can get out as close to the correct time as possible. I really am sorry about that April. And unfortunately, or fortunately for Joseph, he's at the theatre this afternoon watching Matilda. He couldn't help me, which means I've had to do it all by myself, which is fine. I have enjoyed doing it. I'm going to leave this video here now. These have been my three activities that you can do with the letter R for a child 11 or younger. I'm sure that there are plenty of things you can do with older children that would fit into these as well. They would need to be stretched with the read aloud and the robotics that you would be working on. This craft is an all round craft that anybody can enjoy and I really like these markers so we'll put a link to those in the description as well. They've been really lovely to work with. If you are interested in traveling through the alphabet with us, please do check out the play playlist below. I know the ladies who are taking part will have great ideas and they will be ideas that will cover multitudes of 
age groups I would imagine as well from little ones to perhaps even older ones than Joseph. Do check out April's channel her link is in the description below as well. I have been Maria this has been the letter R you have been awesome and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye!